Okay, uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you had a good coffee uh, during the break so you're, you'll be stay awake during this session. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Yanti Sahadi. Currently I'm the country manager for Indonesia for humanitarian open map team. So this is based on our experience having the uni battle mapping last year. Uh, it's a new concept of competition that we tried out and it goes uh, really well and we want to share you the experience and what are uh, some of the keynotes. So a bit of uh, past history about the competition itself. We've had our first competition in 2012. At that time, uh, we, we have goal to map Padang for tsunami and earthquake preparation. Padang is uh, got a quite a big earthquake several years before and we think that it will be good if we can map Padang city so then for the next earthquake we can prepare on where's the, the evacuation camp, where is the uh, evacuation routes that was can be designated uh, for this kind of activities. And this is how it goes. Let me jump in into the second minute. Okay, so here is Padang. So initially, it, it's quite blank in 2011. And then we start initiated, OK, let's have a competition, a mapping competition uh, for student. Uh, so this is for individual student. And then this is, uh, sorry, this is also like the first time when a uh, tasking manager was test out for a large scale uh, mapping. Tasking Manager was launched, and then as you can see, the data is exploded in Padang in less than six months. It seems like it goes really well, especially because uh, the data that was used from the mapping activities is, is was then introduced to disaster manager, so then they can understand better about their area, or where they live, and also to partners that they can use the data for a better preparation during disaster. But what not goes really well is with the competition. Those who won the competition flown to Denver to join the FOS 4G at that time. But what goes not really well is when they won the competition and they get back to Indonesia, the first winner of the competition, they decided, nah, I don't want, I don't want to do mapping anymore. I want to work for an insurance company. So we're thinking, OK, that's not maybe a result that we expected of continuing and, uh, or on having students to keep on mapping uh, their own area. And then second tryout that we have is in 2013 up until 2015, we have University Roadshow Project. And then we also have similar mapping competition built in when we do the socialization and training because we introduce them to OSM and then also the QGs on how they can use the data. And that for this, it goes quite uh, well because uh, as the student is having more enthusiasm about OSM, and some of them uh, keep uh, keen on mapping. One particular university is uh, Hasanuddin University in Makassar, because their lecturer is really get into OpenStreetMap. Even he make it compulsory for the student to map their own city. He make it part of the university assignment, so, so that every student need to map 500 building and 100 road networks. And they also make the mark as a quality assurance uh, measurement. So if you map a city really well, he will give you an A. If you go so not, not to need, like the building is a bit uh, uh, shift, then you get B. And then, or then you get C, D, or yeah, et cetera. So the student will get understand that, oh, OK, so if I, need, if I want to get an A, then I have to map an area properly. So we think that, oh, this is a really good uh, story on how that the lecturer itself already understand about the importance of, on having a good and quali uh, having a quality data. And then also one of the reason of why we think that we, we want to try a competition with focus on data quality is that we have this module. Uh, we also share, uh, we also translate the module as well on the data quality assurance. This is more on the intermediate uh, material for those who already customize, uh, customize in mapping in OSM, so then they want to leverage that capability, they want to know more about how to validate. So we teach 
I mean, we give introduction on several validation tools that they can use. They can check a contribution based on a user or like in a particular area and how they can check the data quality for that area. So we're thinking of why don't we, uh, how, like what is the best way on we, we can socialize this new training material. For this uh, initial tool, it was already uh, quite well known in Indonesia. So then we, uh, so we decide, let's prepare for, uh, let's make a unibattle mapping. Let's create a competition that we haven't done before that is focused on the quality. So we make it a, a requirement for all the team. So this is like more team effort rather than individual contribution. We ask them to form a group consists of three university students. You have an OSM user account definitely. And you need to understand on how to contribute and validate. We'll tell you later on how we're checking that. And then there's also multiple teams from a university allowed, yet during elimination round, only one team can represent their university. So if you join the competition and you're the only team from that university, then you directly go into final. And then you need to follow the Instagram account. This is also our first attempt at Instagram. So I think it, it is important if you want to reach out to students, then you need to have presence in the social media channel that they have. We cannot keep on being in mailing list, for example. In our case, in OSM Indonesia, mailing list traffic is like one or two emails per year. But in Facebook, we have 3, 000, more than 3,000 group, uh, 3,000 members. So more uh, communication done in a new social media channel. So that's why uh, we make it also that uh, they need to follow our Instagram account and they need to retweet the initial Unibattle mapping publication so that other team can join or like other university can also uh, know about it and they can also join it. And then we also set up the specific social media channel. We have the website, but we create a specific page for the battle mapping. And then we have the Twitter account that regularly tweets and remind them about, hey, you need to map. You already have like a couple of days. And then we also set up a line account. And then so this is, uh, we also prepare the scoring criteria and competition rule that <sighs> Those teams need to map at their own designated area. Usually the designated area is the area where they live. So uh, because we think that this student lives in that area, so then they need to map that area. Especially if like, uh, if there's a city, then we usually, and then there's two university from the same city, then we, we divide that area or we look at uh, adjacent area or area surrounding where they live. So it is expected that they only map their own area, not mapping uh, other area. And then they can only use the pre-registered OSM account. And one account can only be used by one person. If it is found out that one account being used by multiple person, then he or she will get disqualified. And then we need them to use JOSM because JOSM already have like validation tools built in to check the error and warning. And we need them to adhere to the OSM mapping guideline. Uh, we have the wiki pages uh, for Indonesia, the object reference, because usually what's in the global OSM pages doesn't look similar with what exists in Indonesia. For the roads, for example, the primary roads in UK is definitely different with the primary roads in Indonesia. So then we provide that kind of uh, reference on so that they can determine uh, what is the correct uh, road type, for example. And then it focuses on three objects. First is building, and then the second highway. This is the type of highway that we uh, map. And then the amenity. In the amenity, we only focus on three things, schools, and then, or uh, education facility and then health facility and also place of worship. This is also aligned with our humanitarian spirit because during disaster, this three place is really useful. And for, but for amenity, uh, we make it compulsory for them to add at least name and address. If they have add another, then yeah, that will be okay. I promise you this is the last site with so many tags, so, so bear with me. Okay, so the scoring criteria and competition rule is that for building, you get uh, 0 0.2 point for each uh, object that you map. Highway, you get 0 0.5, and amenity, you get 0 0.5. But we do have the point deduction. Usually, in our previous mapping competition, we do also have regular mapping competition. Usually, we are the one who do the validation. We are fixing the one. I mean, sometimes people can feel really proud. Oh, I already mapped 1,000 building, but they didn't know that that 1,000 building is it's not really correct or there's some error, it's just some warning that they need to fix. So he may be, he or she may be feeling proud, but he, he or she may not really contribute to the OSM. 
So we, we asked them to also validate their words. So because we also um, remind them that if we, they're not validating their work, then they will get point deduction. So if it's not aligned with the imagery, this is the example. We also specified what imagery that they need to use. So then it will be aligned uh, with the imagery. So like for example, like that one, it's not really aligned with the building. And then wrong tagging, if they put the wrong tagging, like building, they put building on roads or they put uh, build, uh, yeah. So there, there will be like deduction for that. And also minus three for the amenity. You need to be like more careful for amenity. And there's also, if, if you found out, if, if we find, found, uh, found out error during JOSM validation, then there will be more uh, point deduction. So that's why we expect them to do validation themselves. We give them time to do that kind of validation before, uh, before we mark them uh, ourselves. So this is what's quite fatal. This is minus 20. If you only map the buildings, but you didn't map the road networks. So it seems like on the map in OSM, it's like a bunch of building, but there is no road access to there. For that one, we give them like a minus 20. So the first step that we did is uh, we do the socialization about the rule and regulation. We have the roadshow, although not all university may uh, uh, we're not visited during the roadshow, but there are other universities that join, but because we already provide all the guidelines for the competition, they can also join. Or if they live near in one of the roadshow that we come to, then definitely uh, they can also join in with that university to understand more about the regulation and then how they can participate in the competition. Some get really quite uh, a lot of participants. For example, in that corner, you can see that even all the, it, most of the lecturers also come and having their uh, the uniform and then others can have like only like five participants during socialization it's it seems like a consultation or something but they actually one of the winner of the competition later so it's interesting that not necessarily that all the groups that lyric crowded will be like uh, come forward and then uh, during registration we also give them the initial test so there is a test before they can join the Competition. Let me just give you an overview on the test. So we test them their knowledge about uh, OSM. So like this one. So this is, is it warning or is it error? And how do you solve this problem? And then like this one. So what's wrong about this uh, picture and how do you solve it? As you can see that each node in this building is, like, is tagged as a building, not the entire polygon, but like individual nodes. And then like this one, what's wrong about this picture? Can you explain? So as you can see that there are 50 response from the team, and all the team that got marked below 60, they will be disqualified. They cannot join the competition. So we only ask the team that already understand about uh, how to map it uh, correctly or properly. So from out of 50, univers 50 teams that register, uh, 33 of them passed the selection test. And this is 33 teams from uh, more than 10 universities all over Indonesia. And as I explained in the beginning that if you're the only team that register from one particular university, then you automatically go into final round. Other need to join the elimination round because there can, there can be only one team that represents one university. And then when they start the elimination round, we keep on updated about how's the progress. We keep on updated about, okay, you, you have like four days, you have three days, you have two days, you have one day, start validation. And then we also provide them with like the scoring of their all of their edits. But we make a disclaimer that this number of object is not necessarily the final score because we need to check and validate their works or their contribution. So it's not deducted yet. So it can be like you can like ha have higher number, but the real score that you have might be minus. And then in elimination round, again, we'll remind them that yeah, we, they, they also need to check. And as you can see, there are also changes like in Universitas Indonesia here. Rutaku is only 24, and then Geo is 4,000, but then here it grows 2,000, and 
F FBS Geo since like 12,000. It's like really uh, a lot. But then the one that passed through is the Rutaku, not the FBS Geo. Apparently, because the FG, uh, one of the team member of that particular team, they map so many mistakes. They, they've done so many mistakes that the, re, the end result is minus 3,000, their point. But that seems a lot, but there's actually another team from one of the universities I won't mention that have the final score of minus 8,000, meaning that <laughs> they did so many mistakes that, yeah, they, they have, that's the, the record. And my team said that this is like the most plot twist in the competition because there is a, a guy that mapped really well, but one of the team members uh, make it a minus, so then they get disqualified uh, for, for the final round. And the final round, we, uh, we make, uh, the, the elimination round goes for like three days of mapping and two days of validation, while on the final round, we give them five days for mapping and three days for validation. Again, we, we ask them to, uh, validate their works because if not what seems high in this can can mislead for example like on this one number one is uh, space time the number two is empire state that's the name of the team and then the third place is geo unima but it seems like oh probably this is like the first second and the third winner Oh yeah, uh, the cash prize for the competition, why the student really eager to join, we gave them cash prize of 15 million rupiah. Well, that seems like a lot, but yeah. Uh, these 15 million means that just the student will be millionaire. No, because 1 million rupiah in Indonesia is just like 60 euro, so you're not really that millionaire. So, But still, it's, it's an amount that a student really enjoy. And the winner is the, the third winner is the fourth place because the third winner is actually having minus several thousand. So yeah, it, it's good that you contribute a lot. You map so many buildings, you map so many roads, but it will be bad if you don't have a, a good quality assurance built in. And the good thing, the good news on how we try to follow up is that on the aftermath, the winner of the uni battle mapping is becoming the first youth mapper chapter in Indonesia. So I think uh, because after the competition, we try to encourage uh, the participant, if you want to join Youth Mapper, then let us uh, help you in doing that. So the course of the, this competition is from September to November. It's only like uh, two months. But several key lessons learned that we got is quantity and quality are both important. We cannot rely on one very, one, only one aspect. We need both. And competition is a good, a very good way of learning. It's also to prepare them to be a professional, that you need to be responsible on your work. And it is also important on how we can make it sustainable. And this is why the Youth Mapper and then other uh, effort that we're doing is trying to make it sustainable on making some of the campuses as one of the OSM hub in Indonesia so that they can continue to grow. And last but not least, this is all the people that joins in in this uh, effort. Thank you very much. We, we now have time for some questions from the audience. Is there a plan to have another uni battle? Anytime soon? Uh, we're in talk with Grab on that one. <laughs> we'll see. And um, I'm sorry if, if you talked about this, but is it uh, was a competition to map the city the university is in? Yeah. Um, so in, in a future uh, competition, would it be going beyond just the city that the university is in, since that would be well mapped? What are, what areas are you thinking about including in a competition? Yeah, as you can see, like in in the in the area where we doing the roadshow, uh, it is still mostly concentrated in Java Island. We are looking ways on how we can do this in at different other major island in Indonesia, and especially because not un all university in Indonesia is in the major city. Some of them is also in suburb. So we're expecting that those in the suburb can also join and they can map their own area as well. Uh, thank you, thank you for the talk. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Sorry. Do you said that there are some competitors who actually are so 
so bad that they have like minus 3,000 or minus 8,000 or something. Um, who's going to sort of clean that up? I mean, apparently, if it's so bad, it needs some cleaning up because there will be lots of bad data. Will you then just remove it entirely? Or will someone else look at it and repair it? Or what's going to happen with that? It's our own internal team who doing the validation. So, but if we found out that there are so many errors, usually we delete that. So we also uh, initially also socialized that, that if you provide a bad contribution, then we, need, we may need to delete that as well, their contribution. So, yeah. Hello. Um, how many of the participants of the contest continue mapping afterwards? So what is the retention? Uh, we haven't uh, really checked on that one, but some of them keep on mapping and like we involve them in several of our activities as well. Like the space time, uh, they say that because they're a final year student, so they asked our assistant in giving training on OSM. So now they already passed the baton and they already regist officially registered at Youth Mapper uh, chapter, the first one in Indonesia. And then for the Gajah Mada University, they also help us in another mapathon with World Food Program. I think that's next month. So yeah, I, uh, they'll keep on engaged and involved in the mapping itself. Okay, so as, as far as I understood, uh, one of the things that should be improved if you are going to repeat this uh, initiative is uh, to reduce the number, I'll say, of uh, mistakes and... Um, uh, the question is, uh, do you think that uh, this uh, part uh, can be improved, I don't know, uh, by improving the training before, you know, starting the competition? Or did you uh, think to s any specific action to, to reduce this issue? Yeah. Uh, so far, what we plan before we have this event is that we provide them not only with the guidelines that they can read, but we also provide on uh, several videos in our YouTube channel so that they can learn and watch it directly. But although we already provide that mechanism, we do not, we do not provide training because it will be unfair if for one university we give them training, but for other university we didn't give them training. So we want to give them the level playing area. I mean, uh, by, by self-learning, it is hopefully that they can understand about the quality that is expected uh, from the edits in OSM, so yeah. So if uh, there are no other questions, we can thank our speaker. Thank you.